Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, good morning or whatever time of the day it is that you're listening to this podcast. And I'd like to say welcome to Hello Self Podcast. And I'd like to also say happy Valentine's Day to you. This is Valentine's Day, February the 14th, 2023. However, when you see this podcast, It may not be Valentine's Day, but here's one thing that I hope it will do. It will remind you that love happens any day of the year. So celebrate, build bridges with love. Tell somebody that you love them. Tell somebody that they can do it, whatever, just show love. I want to uh, introduce myself. I am Patricia Leonard. I'm the host of Hello Self Podcast. I'm a coach, a motivational speaker or inspirational, some people say that, (laughs) and um, I'm an author also. Uh, So I decided to do this podcast because I have so many friends, associates, and business professionals that I wanted the opportunity for you to meet and learn from because I believe in everybody's story. There are many gifts and lots of glories. So as my guest today, Allie Stewart, you want to say hi, Allie? (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Um, She's going to really um, surprise you with some goodies and some hello self moments in her life that took her on her journey of where she is today. So I just like to say that um, just... Pick up the things that she tells you or that you hear in her story. And if you have a dream or a goal on that someday shelf, it's time to get it off. So look at the things that she talks about that would help you get that dream and goal off your someday shelf. Our show is about turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. So now what I'd like to do is just give you a brief overview of who Allie Stewart is, and then I'll turn it over to her. But watch out, every once in a while I get on my own story and I have to (laughs) jump in, but we'll have a good time. So a little bit about Allie now. Allie is an, I mean, this this blows my mind. I knew her, but I didn't know her. um, Allie is an Emmy, Emmy nominated producer event director, and creative consultant. She has a diverse background in development for documentary film and television. It's a big thing now that streaming is coming on board, especially with the documentaries. So she'll probably tell you more about that. She's a writer for comedy, talent relations and curation of Eddie. Is that edgy? Edgy. Edgy off formal events but anyway she's a lot like me you never know what you're going to expect next (laughs) so this is a good person to help you get your juices flowing for whatever dreams you have and not put limits on it so i'm going to turn it over to um ally now to give you more about her business who she is And maybe we'll even talk about some of the things that she's planning for the future. So, Allie, let's take it from here with your story of your journey. Yes. Thank you so much, Patricia. This is awesome. I am so happy to be here. Oh, great. I always have the best conversations with you. So it's exciting to be able to share our magic and our juju that we've been able to share together with everyone else. Oh, I love magic. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. That's what happens whenever I speak to you. So this is an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I'm I'm glad to Um, have you here. Absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Um, so yes. Okay. A little bit about 
me um is this where I just tell you know yeah where you, where you were a little girl and I remember this or uh, I lived in uh, uh, every place but I was born here and my parents okay. you can tell anything you want because Absolutely. everything okay. yeah everybody's yeah, story so resonates I grew up in a rural town in Southern California called Fallbrook yeah. um so I was just you know always barefoot uh, on an orchard <laughs> with, um, I like to say with chicken shit in between my ah, toes. Yes. Uh, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a citrus, it was a citrus orchard. And, um, my mom is a botanist. So I just got to walk around with my, you know, talking about magic, my magical mother yeah. explaining like how the trees produce fruit and these different herbs that could be good for your skin or good for your, if you had any aches or pains. And she just, um, she helped me to see this like beautiful light and love that is everywhere. She, yeah. she inserted that into me. Um, and I was so lucky to have that. So I was lucky to have that as well as a dad who was this like go getter, you know, he was someone they, they aren't perfect at all. You know, they've got flaws just like I do and like sure. everyone else does, but they definitely, um, you know, gave me a lot of that energy to, mm -hmm. to, um, just be a little wild animal and yeah. make mistakes and run around and figure things out and fail and fall over and get scratched and get yes. bitten by something in the backyard and fall from a tree and and then get back up. I remember um, one of the biggest things too was I lived with my grandma um, and she didn't speak, she barely spoke English. Oh. She was um, an immigrant from Lithuania. She escaped on two feet um, during the Soviet Union. Um, and she had bigger hands than any man I've ever seen in my life. And this woman would just like, she'd pull down trees with those hands and she'd do all this hard work, all this hard labor around the house and she'd cook and, um, and she'd also like hug me and tell me that, you know, in her language, I could be anything I ever wanted to be. So yeah. I also am privileged with that. I had a lot of love, a lot of support, um, as a kid. So um, I, my family, my mom's side of the family, a lot of them are from New Jersey. So I would go out to New York as a little girl in New Jersey. And I love the New Jersey women because, you know, Jersey women tell it like it fucking is. Yeah. <laughs> believe that part. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so that's, that gave me this a little, a lot of empowerment since I was a young girl from these women. I felt like I had 10 moms who were like, you don't let any man tell you the way it's going to be. You do it yourself. Um, so that that was something that I was very, very, you know, blessed and happy about. They were also very hard on me. I had to do things myself. Um, and they were, you know, they were Jersey women. They were New York women. So I went to New York and New York as a kid. I think I, from the time I was, I went when I was little, like eight or nine. And then I went in, when I was really little. And then I remember a third trip. I went by myself to visit my cousin when I was 12 years old. And that was the beginning of, I think that was my first tell of self moment is when I went to New York and I just was how loud people were at restaurants, how, <laughs> um, how messy humans were and, <laughs> and they just owned it. They were confident in it. It's just who they were and they didn't have a problem with it. That's who they were. It was confidence. Like I've never seen before. Yes. Yes. Um, and it was just hundreds of individuals, all different from each other, existing truly as who they were. And that inspired me. I knew I needed to be around that. I knew that was very important in my story as a little girl. Um, so from that moment on, my dream was just get to New York, get to New York, you know? And, um, I always love storytelling. And so I ended up going to school at San Francisco State for um, film, for cinema and production, which was really fun because San Francisco is just a hippie town. Mm. It was <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Been there. It was, been there, done that. Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. And it was a good place to like find my imagination. 
to really, you know, be free to, to be in a park and wear these, you know, ridiculous, wear whatever I wanted and um, talk about what I was reading and what films I was watching. And it, it also, you got to be smart in San Francisco. You can't be a dumb dumb. So it's a nice place for me to kind of shape up uh -huh. um, and kind of wise up and know that I had to learn about the world. I had to um, know that there was a lot of people in this world that had, that looked different than me, that had different opinions than me. Um, I wasn't in like blonde girl, Southern California anymore. That was very important. Uh -huh. um, and then from there I went to New York and in New York, I, um, I ended up, you know, I started off in, in the art department in film and television. Um, and I was terrible at it. <laughs> absolutely awful at it so I was supposed to build sets and you know my sets would like catch fire or fall down or... <laughs> see Allie just jumped in anyway that's what you all gotta do you'll never know till you and you may not be perfect at first <laughs> oh I was horrible at, horrible 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 at it and um I knew I wanted to be around that I knew I wanted to be in storytelling in some way shape or form but and I thought I was artistic, but I wasn't in this way, you know? Yes. So then I was an intern and this is when it was okay to work for free for years and not get paid anything and work all these hours um, at all different kinds of stuff, like a YouTube channel, a, uh, you know, a um, infomercial company um, and then a reality TV company. And I really, really liked the reality TV company because it was real stories. Um, and I I went from intern to producer to, well, associate producer to, you know, field producer to eventually I made it to um, the head of casting and development. Uh -huh. And this was great. This This was great, but it wasn't. One of my new favorite words is duality, right? Mm -hmm is it was awesome but at the same time I was the only woman I would go I work 100 hours a week uh -huh. I was young so they took advantage you uh -huh. know like, she's young and done she'll do all the work yes I it, I did these what they called man shows um so like lots of stuff for history channel national geographic if anything so oh, wow yeah so that was great but like it 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 duality I was having some of the most fun trips I've ever had in my life, like going to Alaska, going to Maine and living with, you know, ice fishermen, going to, you know, for th three months living with these truck drivers. Wow. You know, it was just, it was, it was amazing, but it was very hard on my well being, you know. Allie's pointing out some things that I think are very critical to our listeners right now. And that is, to build your an awareness of what you want to do and to also build your p platform for having the capability to do that is not always a glamorous start. You have to do some things that maybe, but you, you discover where you wanna go. So don't think if you're thinking about changing careers or whatever, there's a, there's a lot of ways. It may not always be a million dollars up front. It may not be all the things that you like to do. She's talking about duality and some of it you'll like and some of it you won't. But that's part of the discovery, number one, of who you are and number two, what you want. Allie, great suggestions. Oh, to me. Thank yeah. you. So, yeah. Thank you. Continue sharing. This is fabulous. Yes. I yes. think that when you're in the duality, that's when you know you're onto something. Ah. I think that when you're like, okay, this is amazing, but this is so hard, or this is killing me, or this isn't good for me, but I love it, or uh, I hate this, but I know it's good for me. You know, like, yes, I think when you're in that, that's when, you know, like, oh, you're, you're, you're on the ship now. You're like, you know, it may be a creek of, of crap, but like, 
<laughs> you know, you are, you're on your way now. You're actually in it. And it's, it's, I think that's when, you know, you're onto something and it's yes. a good thing. It's a good, good thing point. as much as it's like, what the heck is going on? Yes. You know? Great um, point. Yes. 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 So I was definitely in that during that. And I would call this one of my second, this was a second hello self moment. I picked up a book called Be Here Now by Ram Das. Do you know this book? Oh, yes. yes. I haven't read that book, but I know Ram Das. Yes. 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 It's it's beautiful. It's one of, you know, one of the books that changed my life. And I had this um, commute that I had to make from Brooklyn to uh, New Jersey, where the production offices were, where I was at at the time. And I was reading Be Here Now. And the whole point of Be Here Now is don't live in the future. Don't live in the past. Live live in this moment. And I still take that. I sit here with you and I'm like, I love Patricia. Patricia was one of the first people I met here that saw me. And now I look at us where we are. She's doing this amazing thing, which she's supposed to do. You have a voice. You've got to, you're supposed to get it out there. I'm honored that you're here letting me share this. Like I'm here in this amazing moment. It's me. <laughs> it's thank you. And it's something that like it, that's, that's what life is. It tells you that's what life is. It is to be in the moment that is happiness, you know, otherwise you're going yes. to always be chasing either the future or yes. fixing the past or chasing what was in the past or like, and you're not going to, so that was another hello self moment because oh, I, closed wow. that, yeah. I closed that book. I finished it. I got off of the train. I got into the elevator. It was the same elevator I'd been going in drudgingly, you know, kind of like dragging my feet into same people saw every day. We never said hi to each other. Went up the elevator got out of the elevator looked at my office and I was like I gotta go and that was my you say hello self I oh. call it my my knowing yes Same thing. yes yes my knowing was like you gotta get out of here you're not in the moment here you know this is something from somewhere else that is over or hasn't become it, it was from it was from I was living in my past basically yes like, I, I had moved on and, and it, it got, unfortunate. this is something that I say about my knowing or myself. Sometimes it's so annoyingly not loud that my brain <laughs> and my heart, they don't want, it's like my brain and my heart, like, okay, that's fine. But not right now. Like, let's do that next month. And it's like, no, you got to go right. And I feel, I call it Donnie Darko, that movie. That's just like, <laughs> yeah. so I, I was like, crap, I got to. I got to do this now. So in like two weeks, maybe, maybe three, I made a plan. I was like, I don't know where to go, but I do know I've always wanted to go to Southeast Asia. I've always wanted to backpack by myself. That's been something I've always wanted to do. I'm in my twenties. I'm, you know, young and dumb. I'm in great shape. What? I don't have any kids. I don't have a partner. I don't like, yeah. God, now's the time, you know, I have money. Cause I just had this job for a long time. Like who knows if I'm going to have any money after this. <laughs> <laughs> and who cares? We're not living in the future. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's it. Right. Yeah, so I, I made a plan with my, um, with some friends that had gone before. They're like, you gotta go here. You gotta try this. And it changed my life. I went backpacking for four months by myself in Southeast Asia it, this is what truly opened every single door to myself. It allowed me to look right at her and, and be like, okay, we're going to do this life together. I, I'm not going to ignore you. I'm going to live with you, which is terrifying. Bravo, bravo. Oh my God. <laughs> so Thank cool. you. But it was, you know, okay. Because in America, you are taught to shush, 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 distract, 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 distract. But in Asia, that's how they live. They live in them, their self. They live in their knowing. They live in their souls. That's how they live every day. And 
they can tell it's funny they're like an american what is an american doing here like you don't speak this life in this language and I was like no 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 I know I don't teach me teach me teach me teach me yes yes and so it was it was life-changing I I fell in love with myself I fell in love with this life with this world kind of again like from the time I was in a, my orchard it's like now I was in this amazing gigantic beautiful orchard with like 14 different types of cucumbers and all these amazing <laughs> fruits and bugs and you know so that was that was enlightening is the word very enlightening. oh my gosh yes and yeah, you're right about our culture Allie it is so conform I mean it, it uh, teaches us to conform um to do it like somebody else to not really get to know who we are and I think you mentioned something that is very interesting and I didn't know this but it just triggered I wrote a book, um, it was two years ago, I believe now, and it's called The Listening and the Knowing. And you just defined in real life what that book is about, that you, oh. fo you follow your knowing. And it just, uh, it, it's funny, we do things and we don't think until someone like you says, this is how I live my life. And I'm yes. thinking, oh my gosh, that's exactly about my book because I talk about how we here in the United States are all about doing it this way, conform. Don't, yeah, you don't need to step out there, but oh my gosh, I know I'm learning things about you that I didn't even know. And it's so exciting and enlightening and uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for sharing these kind of things because to the listeners, these living in the moment is so critical. Oh, and it's and and you're silly not to. Yes. Because the moment is it's so much fun. <laughs> no, it is. You know, I was talking to a woman in Michigan today, and she just left her corporate job. And I remember we were talking about what she's talking about. What am I going? She is Asian, by the way, Filipino, oh, cool. Filipino. But oh, um, cool. she, uh, she said, uh, you know, what I'd really like to do is buy a little boutique and have my own uh, pearls in there that I sell my own candles. And and she said, but I don't have the money. Mm hmm. These are the things that we are taught here in the United States or in our culture is everything is surrounded by money instead of, like you said, living and figuring out as you move along, but listening to your knowing, listening yes. to and knowing that that's what you're supposed to do. And it will happen. Yes, but I, I, I said that to her, don't put that limit on yourself. Um, because I went to Italy for, with six, for $600. I mean, and nobody, 10 days. So nobody, oh. yeah, yeah. And I had no idea. I said, God, how am I going to do this? But it happened because I knew that I was going. Oh my gosh. I love what you're sharing because these are the things that we need to learn more about. Yes. And, yes. I mean, I need reminders. I have friends that check me often that are beautiful souls that are like you're in your head you're not yes you're not in the moment you're not you're ignoring the real signs you are you know you need some you need good friends that get real with oh, you absolutely sure. absolutely but talking about the uh you know the money thing I love yes. that you said that because money as much as America teaches you that unfortunately it is freaking annoying <laughs> it's a magic trick it doesn't even it's on it's some piece of paper someone prints it up you know and now what we got like little bitcoins and beba beba beef you know? <laughs> what jesus so it, you know and buy gold I, and you'll be safe buy gold I, <laughs> well, they're gonna come up with something different now. i know exactly um but so which is all which is all great and it i'm is. It's, it's totally fine. We need a little bit of governing and we need a little bit of structure or it would be chaos. So it's, yes. it's fine. But I, you know, 
after I came back from Asia, I was, well, I actually ended up staying on a friend's vineyard for a little bit and making some wine. But then after that, after I was a little, very hungover, uh, you know, dreaming <laughs> came from this dreamland, my feet landed back into reality, right? And so I was just broke, 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 broke. So broke, barely scraping by, you know. <laughs> It was, it was a time when I was, uh, I was a great cook because I was like, all right, girl, you got, you know, you got some rolled oats, (laughs) pineapple juice. (laughs) Exactly. Squeeze the apples. (laughs) Yeah. You're going to, you got two potatoes. What are you going to make from this? So this was, you know, at least it turned me into a cook, but I, I, this was when I was like, all right, let's experiment on our own. Let's start, let's start actually saying yes to those little ideas that are in your head and the ones that keep coming up that are kind of nagging um, or the ones that feel good or the ones that, you know, my knowing was getting a little less quiet because I was in the struggle, you know? I was in the survival. Your knowing is very like it's neat during that time. I feel like because you're just trying to stay alive, you know? Yes. And you know, and there's anxiety and there's depression, and these are all very real things. Um, and that can really cloud everything and gray everything. So it was rough, but I started to, you know, say yes to stuff. And one was a queer performance group called Shirley House. I just went to a coffee shop one day and I was like, you guys are my friends. I love you guys, but you have no idea how to make money or, (laughs) and you guys are so, you know, you guys are really smart and you're great at getting a crowd. Let's work on this together. I think I could help produce. I think I could help manage. I think I could book you guys in some big venues. Let's, let's try this out while I'm in this in between. So we started to work together. And then the second project I got, I I did a lot of projects, but these are the two that were, and I mean a lot, (laughs) but these are the two that were successful. The other one was um, this, this guy um, I was introduced to, his name was James Marshall. I think this is one I told you about. Mm -hmm. He came to me, interviewed me, and he's, he was this like wild New York cowboy that was like, I want to do a documentary series about the American dream. I want to kind of answer the question, what is the American dream? What does that mean anymore? Um, You know, and it was very broad, but I loved his energy. And he's, and he said, I think I want to do a motorcycle trip across the United States. Oh, wow. And I just said yes, because I was crazy enough to, and we ended up, we, I went to all the people I used to know in reality TV, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, History Channel, National Geographic, everybody. And they all said, no, dumb, dumb. Like, who are you? How are you going to do this? This is an interesting. <laughs> Goodbye. So we had no money. And so we said, sorry, let me turn this phone off. Um, so we said, let's do a Kickstarter. Let's, let's get this on social media and do a Kickstarter and ended up being called the American dream project. We raised $50,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about having zero money to then that becoming $50,000 um, <laughs> because people believed in it. It was right after Obama was uh, had his time in office. It was right before Trump. Yeah. Uh, gay marriage had just become legal. Yeah. Um, in certain states, uh, there was a lot of stuff buzzing and changing in 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 America. And I, coming from this like place that I was in, my old reality TV stuff, I really knew Americana. I knew that demographic. I knew that. Um, I knew that format, I knew um, that kind of marketing, but I also knew that kind of storytelling and I had a love for it, you know? So it worked. We got together, we worked our butts off, it worked. He ended up getting us sponsors with Cole Haan. Oh, wow. Because he did a Hello Self moment where he came from, um, he came from advertising and he wanted to make a documentary for the first time. He didn't know what he was doing. 
but and everyone was like what are you gonna get uh a Cole Haan documentary on HBO that's that's tacky that's never gonna happen he was like I don't care we need money this is the only way I know how to get it so we got it sponsored we had this 50k we had a 15 passenger van and two motorcycles we went across <laughs> the United States oh my god this is fabulous <laughs> Um, we ended up staying on like the whole point. So we formatted it each step along the way was through social media. I would be like, we're, we're in New York. We're headed to Pennsylvania cool. and people would go beep, 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 beep. You could stay with me. You could stay with me. Um, I stayed on the floor of barnyards. I stayed in an old <laughs> steel mill. Oh my God. This is <laughs> I and love it. That's living in great. the moment. That's living yes. in the moment. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And the whole format was we had to earn our keep. We had to work and do some sort of job to have a plate of food every night and a place to stay. Yes. So the whole crew, the sound guy, the lighting guy, me, the producer, and the two guys on their motorcycles. And the whole point was, what do you think the American dream is now? Who is it for? Is it for rich people? Is it for poor people? Is it for white people? Like, is it, um, you know, what does it mean to you? What does it say in the dictionary? Is it something you can put in a dictionary? And it was just the answers we got and the lifestyles we found. We stayed on a dude ranch. We stayed in an earth ship in New Mexico. Like, oh, wow. And this was all through, I woke up at 4 or 5 a.m., social media, like that led the way. It So show ended, I just was sweating and dirty and, <laughs> and exhausted and happy and shaking my head like what just happened. And um, Netflix came back to us, Amazon came back to us. They had a bidding war, Amazon, Netflix won. It was it was on Netflix for I don't know anywhere from two to three or four years, maybe even more. James will get mad at me. He knows. Um, and then then it was on Amazon, and it stayed on Amazon for a while. I think it's still on there. And then we got nominated for an Emmy. And then we lost to Oprah, which is better than winning to anybody. Exactly. <laughs> That is exactly right. <laughs> so we didn't I, come in first, but we lost to Oprah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Who can say that? <laughs> um, so that was freaking incredible. I took my mom. Oh, I wow. got to see a look on my mom's face like I've never seen him before. And I was unbelievably fulfilled yes. in that moment. That was when I was fulfilled seeing my mom. Yes. In, in a dress that she, she, her sister had passed away and she had a dress that her sister bought her and she was like, it's too fancy. I'll never have anywhere to wear it. Oh. And her sister said, you'll have a place to wear it one day. Oh my goodness. And this was the day she was like, this is the day. This is what I was supposed to, she knew this is what I was supposed to wear it for. And all that came together in a moment where I was like, that was a happy hello self moment. Oh, yes. Of like, wow, how beyond my wildest imagination, I was broke F, you know, like I was never, ever in my wildest dreams. And that made me incredibly happy, incredibly proud. and what what beautiful people I did it with they're still very good friends of mine to this day the queer performance group was taking off as well a lot of them are superstars celebrities they're you know they're killing it in life and they taught me how to do events so after all this my phone finally started to ring and I was able to take on a few really exciting development jobs at places like Huffington Post, Verizon Media, um, all different kinds of like really cool places where I did specifically development. So developing uh, creative uh, 
unscripted stuff. So anything mm-hmm. that's like a game show, a documentary, unscripted social media, um, commercials that involved real- anything. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> and then that led me to having my own, starting my own company and consulting um, for documentaries, specifically for unscripted media. And um, that, so from, from the time of seeing my mother's face mm-hmm. at DMEs to about six or seven years of consulting and being this like kind of executive type or senior producer type, I knew that I was done. I knew that I was done with that world. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was actually one of the strongest moments were and longest moments of like myself taking a really long time to come up. Uh-huh. You know, it wasn't immediate like that book that I closed. And I right. Knew. It was really long going and I didn't know what to do. I knew that I was done. I knew that it was stale, but I was like, but I'm making money. I'm successful. I'm, you know, one of my first clients ended up being Microsoft with my company. I was like, this is, this is great. Why wouldn't I like this? Um, and I, I knew I didn't. And then, and I feel like this is, this is, this can't be anything else but God. And then everything kept just like going wrong. Like I kept doing it. I kept doing, I kept Uh doing, I kept consulting. I kept working with people that I thought would be great. And it really wasn't, it really wouldn't work out Uh over and over and over and over again. That's another key thing, Allie. And I know, I don't know what you're going to say next, but I'm excited to hear it because I think that's when some people give up and there are those moments that we go through. Me too. I mean, I I, I just, uh, for almost two years, I kept saying, God, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. And so we don't know. And this is when a lot of people just say, I can't figure it out. Sometimes we need to talk to somebody about it, a coach or whatever, yes, or yeah. supportive friends, like you said. But that yeah. is, yeah, that is. So I'm anxious to see what happened beyond that when you woke up. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's great is you were a part of it and we're in it right now. Like this is happening. This is happening now. And it's, it's super, it's super exciting. And I, I, okay. So I've been doing events in between. I, the, the other things I was doing in my company is I started to flirt with comedy. I started writing for comedy because I had, I just had a lot of friends that are comedians and they've grown in their career. And they're like, this joke, this joke you said over brunch, can I buy it? <laughs> and and, and I the world like, yeah. needs a little humor. We know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh heck, if you don't got that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. You ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing. Um, so yeah, so I uh that was that was fun. That started to kind of buzz my creativity in a new direction. And I've been doing my own events. I've been um experimenting with this new world of what I like to call edge formats or um, activations. Um, So the first one that I did and that I'm doing is never sent, right? And never sent is, uh, it's a hot microphone where people read text messages, emails, and letters that they've never had the guts to send. Um, The way that this started was with um, my friend, Jess Byers in 2020. He runs these incredible film festivals um, all over the United States. And he's like, Allie, the world is ending and we need a event for these film festivals that are now online. Can you come up? Yes. Can you come up with a format that would work for Zoom? So I came up with two or three things. I had to, I had to pitch it and they hated the other, (laughs) hated the other (laughs) two and they loved never sent. Yeah. So it started there. My first one, I sold out a hundred tickets. Second one sold out a hundred tickets. 
And then I just was like, this makes me so happy. I want to, I want to keep doing this. So I brought it to Kindling Arts Festival. Mm. Um, and my, uh, my friend Daniel runs that. He's so important to the Nashville community and the arts community here. He's a real, a true like pioneer and incubator. Shout out to the, to this guy, Daniel's amazing of Kindling Arts. And um, I did never sent n- now with the new kind of format of including performances that people have never performed in front of a, a live audience before. Um, And I did this kind of as a, A, trying to take what I knew from documentaries and implementing them into a format on stage, real people saying real things. Um, And then the second thing I was trying to do is figure out the culture of Nashville because coming from New York, LA and what we were saying, you know, in America, people kind of shove it down people really shove it down in Nashville. Yes. It's, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of two different sides of the political spectrum here. There's a lot of, you know, people who believe in God and who don't believe in God. Yes. And that's a lot of friction. And I think that because of that, you and me have talked about this before. Yes. People are terrified of expressing themselves. Yes. Because a, they might be in danger for it. There's laws against, you know, people who are transgender. There's laws being passed about being able to perform drag. So you could literally get arrested for it. Yes. But also, you know, we're we're South adjacent, right? And, or, you know, some people believe culturally this is the South. And there's there's oppression in that. But there's also so much art here. But you know, Allie, I th- you, you are describing perfectly. But the one thing that I learned when I came here, because I came from the Midwest, from Indiana, but when I came here, because of the influence of Chicago and the Indianapolis, and the, when I came here, it was like walking back 20 years in time. I, I'm not kidding you. Yes. I was a professional woman, and men expected me to get them coffee. And uh, things like that. And I said, uh, and then I remember one time I wore a lime green jacket to a meeting and I had purple fingernails. <clears throat> and we talked and talked and talked. I was uh, looking for an opportunity to do some training with this company. We talked and talked and talked as a group. And finally I said, we're not getting any place. Is it, does it have anything to do with this lime green jacket and these purple fingernails? of why you're hesitating on bringing me in. The room went dead silent. It was all men. The room went dead silent. But guess what? Yeah. You I broke guess up. what? I got the job. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I think it's funny, but you're absolutely right. And still today, we're in this opposites thing. Yeah. You know, the, I'm on this side. I'm on this side. I remember I was asked by a person, are you a Christian? And I said, well, what if I said I wasn't? How would you treat me then? So I think you're absolutely right. Nashville or this area is even more about that. But the good thing is people like you from New York, from California are coming in here. And this last book I wrote, I had my son and his wife Uh, read it and give me some feedback before I published it. And they said, what do you mean by this? They live in California. What do you mean by this, mom? And I went, oh my gosh, there's a different language. (laughs) So I, I, I totally resonate. I think we are making some progress. It's because of people like you. Well, I have made so much progress because of people that okay this was so this was thank you so much for saying that Uh, there's something so special about Nashville though because what's happening what's happening here is coexistent yes that's a good point there you can't have people on these opposite sides of the spectrum that doesn't exist in New York they can't do that are you kidding me they would implode 
They can't do that in LA. They can't. LA can't hear a Christian's opinion. In Nashville, I it has being in Nashville has helped me as someone who I believe in God, but I don't really identify as religious. But being in Nashville has helped me find um, my spirituality because yes. of the incredible people who are Christian. I concur with you fully. Yes, and. I think the strength that we actually have here is like America's goal is to like, to be people who are individuals who have totally different lifestyles and beliefs and to be able to freaking laugh at the same joke for Christ's sake. You know, Allie, it's funny because you are absolutely right. I went to a one woman show last, uh, or Saturday, Sunday, and it was about, this woman was talking about critical race theory and oh, yeah. ha- and she's uh, she said the title of it is would i mispronounce my name and uh so she's um mexican and a lawyer i mean and she but she switched to the film industry and tpac actually brought her in to say these are the things we need to hear and it was interesting because we had a discussion after her one woman show and mm-hmm. it was the diversity, even in the group, the diversity. But the good thing is it makes you look at yourself and say, yes. yeah, how do you, how does, hello, Patricia, how do you feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does this make you uncomfortable? Why? Exactly. Yes. Are you mad? What are you mad at? And why yes. are you mad about it? Yes. Or are you avoiding something and why? You, you and know, it I was think- a very diverse audience, just like oh, you're that's- no Wonderful. it was it, it was exactly it was so beautiful yes yeah and i think that's what we do have here that no yes. one that most states don't and cities do not have Good and point. i i think that's where all of our power is and i think that's where like we can build something important and nashville can have way stronger of an identity than this kind of like hiding in this like safe, polite thing. Yes. You know, uh, um, Allie, in my coaching, I find that people just want to express their soul is ready to do something. Uh, and we don't, They sometimes they know what it is and sometimes they don't. But I think you're right. It's getting to the point here where express what you want to. I want to start a theater called Expression Theater. Yes. Uh, and, and just let... Uh, <laughs> people come in and express uh it could be a little show or it could be anything but express who they are what they are about and how they see the world because you're you're so right we're waking up in my book yeah. I talk about our society is waking up yeah yeah and I, I'm excited to live in a time where that's happening Me and too. Yeah. So, so to bring it, to bring it back to this project, I wanted to see what people needed to express. I wanted to see in Nashville, you know, what people were keeping and not saying. That's what the whole never sent thing was. Like, what, what are you, what are you terrified to tell the world that you, but also I don't, you know, I'll go out and say, would you be interested? But this is for those folks that have been holding back. Yes. that now are like, all right, I got, I got something to say. I yes. got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me you know? speak it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, here's a microphone, man, like go on and say it. So it's been really cool. It's been really awesome. Um, we have a, we went, I, Kindling Arts helped me so much. We, I got a residency for a year at the barbershop theater. Um, and then that ended up turning into where I am right now. Um, so that lands me where I am right now. And I, you know, being unsure about, I don't want to do this consulting stuff anymore. So right now I was supposed to, when I was talking to you, I was supposed to do three months with that, with that guy yes. to have the, the contract. We both decided no. Um, it was, it just wasn't, a, it wasn't a good fit. And I knew I had to, there was one thing I realized. I was too scared to realize my dream, my new direction, because if I knew it, then I would have to either deny it and ignore it and keep distracting myself, 
or I would have to be like, okay, you got to do it. <laughs> you have to freaking do it now. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, My God. So, yeah, I was putting it off. I was just, I didn't want to know it. And like, so now I'm in a similar space and what's also terrifying, I'm in a similar space to where I was when I was doing art department, starting in film and breaking everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, you know, I'm like, okay, I know I want to do these events. I know I want to do these shows. I know that I, you know, I'm working with a bunch of drag queens, burlesque comedians, a lot of specifically female comedians. I'm working with a lot of writers like yourself. Mm-hmm. And I said no. I said no to the job. I said no. So this is my first step saying no. Just the things that aren't part of the plan aren't, that's how I can, because I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that, like, okay, I got like three or four or five offers to do consulting and I said no to each and every one of them learn how to say no there's a great point she's bringing out here yes (laughs) yes it's so hard because because it's stability because it's comfortable because and so I've said no and now I'm saying yes and being the now I'm you know my phone used to ring now I'm making some phone calls now I'm getting rejected I'm getting denied you yes. know but then one little treasure will come up you know, I was in New York and I reached out to two of my favorite venues and never ever ever did I think that they would come back to me both of them came back and both of them were like let's meet and they're huge they're big 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 deals bravo Thank you. And that, that just filled me up with energy and, you know, and there's little, um, like winks, little, little things here and there that are starting to pop up and get really exciting and conversations that have a lot of potential. And I definitely have, um, some stuff that's starting to bubble in the pipeline of where I could go. Um, and then, and it, I had, like, I've been applying for some work and, I got two, two offers that I was like, I know this isn't the, nope. I know what I've been here. Not going to do that again. Yes. And then there's, you know, and I just got one interview finally at a place that is the right thing that I think could go the right way. And so I'm in this, okay, I'm saying my hard no's and my going for my hard yeses and I'm making it very, I'm carving you know, I'm being yes. brutal. I've got yes. the chopping board and I'm, I'm being decisive and I feel like I'm, I have a directive now and that I can follow, which if feels- that's something you want to share about what your, your plans are for the future or your career, yes, your yes. life. Yes, absolutely. Do you mind if I really quick let my kitty cat in? She's no, scratching. no. <laughs> We do everything on this podcast. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Boozy. Oh, what's her name? Boozy. Oh, Boozy. Boozy. It's short Boozy. for caboose. Yeah. With her oh little tail. <laughs> She's got uh, a little caboose. She okay. was part of the attention. Yes, yes. She, that's all she wanted was a little, little bit of love. Um, so yeah, so what I'm doing now is, uh, so I'm continuing to do Never Sent, and Patricia, yes. I really want you to be a part of it. Yes, I want uh, to be. Absolutely. And right now I'm talking to three different venues that are bigger um, than the last place that I was in. The, you know, Barbershop just gave me so much love and helped me grow this thing. And now we've grown. Mm-hmm. Um And so I'm looking, I'm talking to three new places to try to find a new home. Um, And I'm, you know, finding all the incredible readers and performers that are going to be a part of this. Um, It will be never sent will be happening March 30. No. Yes. March 31st and April 2nd. Um, The where you can find it is. Um, the information is either on my website, which is Ragana. This is my company. It's called Ragana Creative. So it's, it's R A G A N A. Yep. Creative. 
Yep, Ragana creative. Ragana is it means witch in Lithuanian. Um, oh. which is yeah, which is the language my grandma spoke and my mom and all the yes. New Jersey. Yeah, it my it's one of my favorite words because if a woman says Ragana, it means like you go girl, like you witch. Oh, I love That's that. Cool. <laughs> And if a man says Ragana, it's like an insult. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, well, I'll pay attention to that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> You're ever in Lithuania. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's on raganacreative.com. I'm, I'm, I'm up, updating my website this week um, or Instagram. Um, never and then underscore, underscore sent s e n t um so that's that's the first show that i'm doing i i have to be careful about what else i say because i'm yeah, just that's okay i'm just talking to people yes um but i am talking to um a few folks in um who are comedians mm -hmm. um and who are drag queens mm -hmm. um I'm thinking of calling the show don't be a drag just be a queen mm -hmm. um which is a Lady Gaga line from a song yes <laughs> yes um and it's to fundraise efforts um against Proposition One and for um, you know, transgender families to help, you know, bring rights for transgender kids in Tennessee right. with the laws and the bans that will be against them. And to there's, you know, they're trying to make a ban on performing drag in public spaces. Interesting. And so um, there's it's very likely that there will be a law passed and we won't have any more drag shows. And that's just silly. So you I'm know why I, I was in a film one time here in Nashville and um, there was a, a drag queen in it. He, he was uh, at the bar. Yeah. And you know what? I fell in love with he and his wife both. His wife was his manager. Or, or I, I don't know if it was wife, but his partner was yeah. his manager. And he, showed, he let me see as he was putting on his hose, uh, you know, how his legs formed. And I mean, yeah. it, he was... Oh, it was a delight, something. And I love experiencing things that I've never experienced before sure. because I want to see what, how different people are and enjoy with them who they are. It may not be my way, but I don't have to fit into everything. I'm just, yeah, yeah I'm exploring and the world. Totally. And if you, that's, I love that you're that way so much because it's you know it's hard to find it's hard to be a person that is open to every everybody's way of living and it's it's rare to find other people that are like that it's not easy you know I'm not someone that wants to hang out with a whole bunch of yeah you know army gun toting people but at the same time I have, and I've learned a lot about like exactly. how you can eat a whole animal and exactly. all of the different like art forms to hunting and how all the history behind it. And, you know, there's things like that, that I, I realized you got to check yourself sometimes. And you I know, love Allie, I think it's funny because God exposes us to things sometimes that, um, again, like that one woman show I went to, I wrote a book, um, I don't know, five or six years ago, called Becoming Woman. And I was on my website the other day trying to um, just just bring it up to date and stuff. And I saw that somebody had ordered a copy of Becoming Woman. And I thought, oh, my God, it was in 2017. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I don't think I ever sent that. So there was an email in there. And it was uh, C Crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-Y-L. And it was an email. <clears throat> so I emailed. Now that's 2017. And I emailed <laughs> the person and they answered. Then I got a note from Crystal and said, if you want to talk more, uh, I didn't get your book, but I did go ahead and buy it. 
And so I wanted to see what they thought about it because it was a journal type book. But oh, cool. anyway, I called. He gave me, uh, yeah, I already told this story now. The, the email came back. And so I called and I said, I'm looking for Crystal. And it was a man's voice. And he said, oh. I am Crystal. And I said, did you order? And so he started telling me he's 74 years old. Anyway, we were on the phone an hour. But oh. anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, I want to tell you that's not about becoming woman. And he said, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, awesome. we talked more and I fell in love with this guy. He said, I knew from the time I was six years. And I know that's not necessarily what this podcast is about, but it's about, no, I love this. It's I love about it. the world um, that we live in is so diverse if we wake up. And he and I had the best talk. And I even asked him about some of the young people being taught about this and how his opinion was. And we, you would have thought it was you and me talking or just me and my brother or something. It was not like people think, oh my God, this person is so, no, we had the yeah. best. And it was interesting to learn life from his perspective. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And, uh, yeah. And he said, Patricia, I just became uh, trans four years ago. And he said, I married this guy and I am so happy. I've never been happier. And I told him, I said, I don't understand it, but I hear what you're saying and I respect what you're saying for you. And uh, so I think this is, we're in a generation now, we're in a our universe is evolving and we're yeah. at a time where we're seeing all of these aspects of life and they're, we're being confronted, not confronted, but awakened to them. Yes, yes and we this, are. Who are you, Patricia? How do you feel about, oh, you think you got it all right? Well, maybe you don't have it all right, but that we can now listen without taking an opposite side. Yeah, and meeting in the middle. Yeah, I, I, oh my gosh. Yeah, totally. Well, for folks that are transgender and for folks that are um, drag queens right. or drag kings or drag kings, which I yeah. love, um, talk about hello self. Those yeah. are people that had to be brave about something about themselves that I'd say, you know, half of the United States, half of the world hates. Yes. A strong hatred for that. Yes, that is. And exactly. they have that in them. That's who they are. And, th you know, you saying, hello, Patricia. Imagine, you know, Crystal has always been Chris his whole life. And he, Chris has to be like, hello, Crystal. Yeah. Crystal's like, hey, girl, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it was the most adult conversation. I loved it. It was like talking to you, Allie, or talking oh. to my brother or something. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm learning as I go. I can't. I was a little country girl and uh, uh, grew up in a, not a biased family, though. Definitely, I, I've got Asian. I mean, I've got uh, blacks in my family. I mean, it, so we weren't biased, but we were just uh, we weren't exposed to a lot. I was a little country girl, and but anyway, um, I love I love what you're doing. Uh, by giving us a broader view of the world through your performances, through your uh, creative writing, through your creative uh, business that you're doing. Uh, you. Because this is what we need. We need to wake up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we need to learn from each other. Yes. I think we need to have spaces where you know, um, it, it, it isn't so black and white because life is gray. Life is a gray area and that's actually where the most beautiful stuff happens. Yes. So I want to tell those kinds of stories and I want to invite, you know, that kind of, that kind of, those kinds of people that are like mushy and comfortable, can want to feel comfortable in those kinds of spaces and, you know, flirt with something that maybe they're interested in or they don't understand and they want to, or because I don't think it works to be forceful with stuff. 
on yeah. either side. Oh you my know? goodness, right. Yeah, so I just, and also everything that I do has got a little bit of, if a little bit, if not a lot, it's always a very healthy dose yes. of, of laughter. Yes. Of, you know, of making fun of yourself, not taking yes. yourself too seriously because laughter and comedy, I think is the, um, I think it's the smartest language in the world. It's like when and I it's a pathway, like you said, it's a pathway between, oh, I feel this way. Oh, but I didn't think like that. So it's a pathway between. It breaks. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, like exactly. breaks you into. Once yes. you're laughing, it can it it. It's almost like you get some air in your body. You're you're getting. Yes, some you're not so stuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Allie. Oh my God, I could continue talking to you forever, and I know yes, you've yes. got things to do, and so have I. Um, I did have one thing down here, and I think you've already covered it. Any specific life or career advice you would offer maybe one key yeah. thing yeah uh, yeah I would say um fail 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 oh, all the time it. know that you're just gonna like if you know you call someone and they don't pick up the phone find 12 different ways to call 12 different people to get to that place or maybe 405 different ways um yes and then you'll get it. Yes. That's some of my biggest advice is failures are the only ones who succeed. People who are successful are people that have are really, really good at failing. Oh, yes. um, so that's what I, that's what I would say. And then within that, um, whenever you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do next, first, look at what you're absolutely terrified of because therein lies the answer head that way because that's where you'll find it and then second of all once you find it just flirt with it yeah just lean, just lean in a little you don't gotta like have a military plan with a trumpet in the morning and just just flirt with it a little bit that's how you can start if you do have the military plan it'll probably get shot down along <laughs> the way <somewhere. laughs> So just go with it. Just flirt around. Yeah. Now, I just love dance. that advice. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. we get too serious sometimes. Yeah. And, oh, it didn't do. work. Wait, don't. It may work. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. What if it all works out, though? Exactly you know? right. Oh, my God. This is fabulous. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I got to know more about you, and then I got to share you what I did know with you, with the world about you. And uh, we will have your website on uh, the podcast. Oh, great! And, yes, and your business and everything. So we'll have. Um, is there? Is that the best way to get a hold of you? Is through the podcast? I mean, through yeah, the, yeah. Uh, um, or do uh, you the best. To give out any more. Yeah, if anybody wants to get in contact with me, my uh, email is Allie, A-L-I-E, at Ragana Creative, R-A-G-A-N-A. N-A. <laughs> Creative.com, yes, yes, yes. yes. So yeah. you you might, uh, to our audience, thank you, thank you, but yeah. to our audience from Hello Self, I want to say, I hope and I know that you got something out of this today. Don't just let it be a motivational moment. Let it be an inspirational moment that you get serious about asking yourself, hello, who am I and what is it I want? Because I think that that is the way that we get out of this comfort zone that we so often live in. So just take those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and start with some of the advice that Allie has given you and her journey. She talked about Hello Self Moments. So thank you again for being here today. I am Patricia Leonard, your Hello Self podcast host. And remember what I always say. Keep dreaming. See you next time. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this. 
keep dreaming.